Hi, my name is Milos and welcome to Element 14 Presents. Here in my hand I have a small keyboard made by Razer. I game on a laptop so I love using this keyboard so I don't ruin the built-in keyboard. And one of my favorite types of games to play is actually sim racing games. So let's jump into one game and I'll explain my project further. So we're in a set of Corsa now, I'll be using a normal keyboard to drive, so let's get going. Switch it in, into first. One problem with using a normal keyboard is, well, we have binary control, so it's either full lock steering, it's full throttle or full brake. It's uh, handled in software a bit, but it's never perfect. For example, steering here is too slow, I can barely get around the corner. For example, if it was uh, too fast, this would, part here would be too twitchy and we couldn't keep it on the straight. Also, for some reason, I only have half a brake here. And I lost the car. So my idea with this project is to design a, some kind of a keyboard that can have analog input. So the harder we press, the more throttle or the more steering we give to the car. So let's jump out of the game now and talk a bit more about the project and we'll return to a set of course uh, in the end. So the idea behind this project is to actually measure the force behind every key press so we can have proportional steering, proportional throttle control and things like that. How are we gonna do that? How are we gonna measure the force? There are a couple of ways that we can do that. Uh, first of all we can use commercial switches but they can measure only weak forces. Another would be to use something like a load cell. Here's an example of that. Well, load cells are a great thing to do that with because we can get really precise, accurate, absolute measurements. Uh, we don't need absolute measurements and they're rather bulky and we need to use an amplifier circuit with them. Another option would be to use something like this. This is a force sensitive resistor or just simply an FSR and it changes its resistance as we apply pressure to it and it's rather small and simple to use. It's not as precise as a load cell, but it will do the job, especially because we're driving on field. So let's check out how an FSR works and put it into a keyboard. How does an FSR work? Let's first take a look at the FSR that you've just seen me hold. So you have these electrodes on each side, and if you look closely, they don't actually touch, and we have the contacts at the bottom. So the FSR itself is actually made out of three layers. We have the top layer, which are the electrodes, the middle layer, which is the spacer, and the bottom layer, which is actually the carbon electrode layer. When we actually press on the FSR, what we do is get the electrodes and the carbon layer closer together, and the harder we press, the greater the contact surface and the lower the resistance. And that's what we actually measure when we press the FSR. To test out the FSR, I'll just use the ohm meter on my multimeter. Let's just connect them together first. First thing you'll see is that it's an open circuit when you're not touching the FSR. If we press it slightly, you will see that it's a couple of hundred kilo ohms. If you press it harder, the resistance drops more. Let's now get the scale and see how the resistance changes with different pressure. This scale can go up to 3 kilos. Now the harder we press, the resistance goes lower and lower, but the scale goes into error mode over 3 kilograms. But as you can see, we can go as low as 2 or 300 ohms. To make the module, let's first take a look at the essential components. We have the key cap, the key switch, the key switch holder, the FSR and the bottom plate. So the key switch just clicks into the upper body, but the upper body and the FSR need to be glued together. We need an interface between them, so I use the silicon foot to better get the pressure across. And the FSR has a double-sided sticky tape on the back, so it just glues onto the bottom plate. Let's now jump into CAD to look at the final assembly. Here is the finished assembly for the analog switch. This on top is the MX switch, which just clicks into the part underneath it, which is the 3D printed part. As you can see, I've left some holes for the wires for the switch. Underneath that, we have the silicon foot, which acts as an interface between the upper body and the FSR, which is underneath, so we can spread the load better. Under that is the FSR itself, and under that uh, we have the bottom plate, 
and the bottom plate and the FSR as mentioned before are attached together using the double-sided sticky tape which is on the back of the FSR. The only thing we need to make sure when assembling it is for both uh, sets of wires to face in the same direction. Let's now go and assemble one of these analog switches. Okay, so these are all of the components that we will need for the assembly. First we have the keycap, it's from printables, I'll link it down below. Then we have the keyboard switch, MX Brown, the 3D printed body, silicon foot, FSR and the bottom plate in the end. First things first, we need to connect the keycap and the switch, they just click together, like that. After that, we need to uh, add the switch to the upper body. To do that, we need to thread the two wires through the wire holes, as you can see here. Okay, now that we've done that, we need to add the silicon foot. One thing about the silicon feet is that the glue is really weak, so I'm gonna add a few drops of super glue just to make sure it stays in place. Okay, now you can see another piece of tape on top of the silicon foot. That's for attaching it to the FSR. But before we do that, we need to attach the FSR to the bottom plate. Let's do that. Okay, the last thing to do is remove the piece of tape from the silicon foot. And here we need to make sure that the wires both face in the same direction. Let's test the analog switch as the joystick. So I've connected it uh, using a 1K resistor that you can see here as a voltage divider to the analog pin of the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, on the rest of the screen you can see the code. Uh, so the code is pretty simple, it uses the Pico gamepad library. I define the pin that I use for reading the analog signal, I increase the ADC resolution and I just map the value from the ADC to the resolution that the PC expects from the joystick. Now if we open the serial plotter, these are the live readings from the ADC. So let's press the FSR now. You can see the big spikes as I am pressing on the analog switch. That's what we are expecting to see. Now we need to see if that works as a joystick. I'm going to use the built-in gamepad tester and it's mapped as the axis X. And you can see that as I press the FSR, you can see the X axis moving which means that the basic concept for our analog keyboard is working, so we can make it into a whole keyboard now. And to make this into a piece of actual gaming equipment, we only need one more thing, and that's RGB LEDs, of course. There's no such thing as gaming equipment without RGB LEDs. Instead of using a normal RGB LED strip, where we can only control all of the LEDs at once, this uses addressable RGB LEDs, which means we can control each one individually, which will allow us to make a lot of different effects. The only thing left now to do is finish the design of the whole keyboard and finally test it out. So let's go do that now. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! The main thing about the design is that I want to have the four analog switches in the front, like arrow keys, three keys on each side for changing gears and things like that, they're in their own modules. I also want to have a detachable USB Type-C cable in the front, and I want to have RGB LEDs all around. And also I've left some mounting holes for a handrest. Let's now jump into CAD to see the final model. Here is the CAD model of the inner workings of the keyboard. Let's begin with the main part, the analog switches in the front. You can see the four analog switches and the analog switch stabilizer around them. Besides that we have the side switches which are in their own modules as you can see. In the middle we have the space for our electronics, for our PCB. It's all held down uh, together with the bottom plate. And in the front uh, lastly we have the USB-C connector for the detachable USB-C cable. The last thing to do is check the electronics and finally assemble the keyboard. So for the most part, it's just connecting all of the keyboard switches to the Raspberry Pico. Uh, one difference is I added a 10K pull-down resistor and I also added a debouncing circuit consisting of a resistor and a capacitor, as you can see here. Connecting the FSRs is also a bit different. We still have the 1K pull-down, as you can see, and we have a voltage divider. But the Pico only has uh, three ADC pins and we have four FSRs. 
for throttle brake and steering. To connect them I used an analog multiplexer, the CD4053BE from Texas Instruments. And that's how I'm able to actually connect all four FSRs using only two ADC pins on the Pico. The only thing left is the LED strip. As for the LED strip, the 5 volt comes from the USB cable and the strip itself works actually pretty good with 3.3 volt logic from the Pico. So that would be the full schematic. Let's just assemble the keyboard and we can finally drive that formula in Assetto Corsa again. Here's the final code for our analog keyboard. So it uses the same Pico gamepad library as I've showed you before and uses the fast LED library for the addressable LEDs. Here I just defined the pins. These are the parameters of the keyboard so you can adjust your keyboard to your preferences, whether it's more reactive, whether you need to push harder on it and things like that. The whole code is broken into different functions so you can write your own algorithms and the only thing you need to do is call this function called update joystick which just updates the PC to the current state of your keyboard. Let's take a look at the one I'm using that you will see at the end of the video. So this is a read input experimental. So we pretty much need to read all of the values and uh, to read all of the values the, that means that we need to go through both states of the multiplexer so we can read all four of the FSRs. We do this by first making sure that the digital pin is at zero, reading the two values, setting it to one and reading then the other two values. Here you can see the code that takes care of everything else. One thing to note, for example, is that this dynamic X minimum, for example, as well for the other axes is every time you press a key, a new dynamic minimum va value is recorded because of the nonlinearity of the FSR. So every time you actually press a key, because that's the minimum force you can actually use that key with when the key is pressed, it maps it to a new minimum value and scales it up from there. That would be pretty much uh, everything for the code, besides that I have some debug prints and the rest is just controlling LEDs in different sections and calling the functions that you've just seen. So that would be the whole code. And it's finally done, we finished our keyboard. This is something I wanted to make for quite some time and I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's a bit on the bigger side, but that's why I made it modular so you can adjust it to your preferences. It fits my hands pretty nicely. So the only thing left to do now is jump back into Assetto Corsa and compare the experience of driving the formula com uh, compared to the normal keyboard. So let's do that now. Okay, so we're finally back in Assetto Corsa, but this time with our custom keyboard. As you can see by the green lights, the keyboard is in binary mode, so we have full complete steering and there is no ramp to it at all. So let's get to driving and see how this will go. The only good thing is we have the pit limiter so we can at least start. Yeah, this is not a pleasant experience. As you can see the car is extremely twitchy with controls like this. The only good thing we can do is keep it in a higher gear at lower revs, the car is a bit more controllable. But yeah, just keeping it on the straight is a pretty horrendous experience. Yep, that's really not a good experience. So let's return to the pits. Okay, so to switch to the analog version, we need to hold these four keys and you will see the lights go out. And there we go. Now you can see that we actually have proportional steering, we can keep the steering at a certain angle or keep it at half throttle, half brake, things like that. This won't make me a better driver, but it will make it more fun, so let's try it out. As you can see, it's a much, much smoother experience than the binary keyboard. 
and you can proportionally control the throttle, the brake, so you can get a much smoother driving experience. Oof. Yet again, that won't make you a better driver as you can see here, but it's much for, more fun to drive the car. When you get used to it, this keyboard gets pretty fun, but honestly fingers do start hurting after a few laps, especially a few laps of something like Spa. You can see that when I hit the limit, the lights on the keyboard turn red. That means I'm at full joystick input for the PC, so I don't need to keep on pushing harder so my fingers don't hurt that bad. As you will see now with max braking and it was too late. Oh well, let's just finish up the lap without spinning it. That will be an achievement compared to the binary version. As you've just seen, it's a pretty fun experience and a pretty smooth experience to use this keyboard. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I hope you found the video entertaining. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions on what should I make next for sim racing, please uh, leave them down below on Element 14 community. You can find all of the code, CADs, uh, uh, CAD files and everything else that uh, you need for this project down below. Also Element 14 community. So until next time, see ya!